Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Penny's Reading Nook. Can you see me? I can't see you. There you are. I see you now. Hello. <laughs> Boy, do we have a big book to read today, and it is a very good book. I think you're going to really, really enjoy it, okay? So, Enough with the chit chat. Let's dive right into this gigantic book. The name of our book today is called What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? This book was written and illustrated by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. All right. I've got to get both hands here to turn the page. Ready? Oh, whew. That's a big book, isn't it? Okay, what do you do with a tail like this? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's a skunk tail. I don't think I wanna do anything with that. Okay. Animals use their noses, ears, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find more about these animals. All right, so each time we're gonna look here. Okay, what do you do with a nose like this? Okay, so pay close attention to the noses and see if you can guess what animal each nose belongs to. I'm gonna pause for just a few seconds so you can really concentrate on them. I have one, two, three, four, five different noses. All right, are you ready? Okay, let's turn the page. Let's find out what we're gonna do with a nose like this. Well, if you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. Ew, I don't know about that. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. Ew, I don't know about that one either. If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. That's a very interesting nose, isn't it? And if you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. Hmm, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Okay, next. What do you do with ears like these? All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. So you think, what ears does that, what animal has ears like that? Hmm. You ready? Okay, let's turn the page. Well, if you're a bat, you see with your ears. Hmm, did you know that was a bat? If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep cool. Hmm. If you're a cricket, you hear with your ears that are on your knees. Can you imagine having ears on your knees? Huh. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. And if you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. Wow, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay. Uh-oh, looks like we have some tails now. What do you do with a tail like this? Okay, really concentrate. What animals do you think the tails belong to? Hmm, I have an idea, do you? Are we ready to turn the page? Okay, well, if you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. Uh-oh. If you're a skunk, 
you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on the way. Whew. Beware, stay far away from that tail. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. Oh my goodness, right there's the lizard. There's the other part of his tail. Hmm. If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. And if you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. All interesting things, huh? Ooh, did you ever have the feeling you were being watched? Oh, I do. <laughs> what do you do with eyes like these? Look at the interesting eyes. And who do you think they belong to? Give you a moment. All right, ready? Let's turn the page. Well, if you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high in the air. If you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. That's interesting. If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Oh, that's gross. And if you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. Okay. Hmm. What do you do with feet like these? Look at the feet for just a little bit. Who do you think they belong to? Oh, let's see. You ready? Okay. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. Oh, that's interesting. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. Well, that's interesting. If you're a water strider, you walk on water. Wow, that would be fun to do, wouldn't it? Walk on water. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. And if you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. Oh, I don't know about that. I have a little bit of a fear of heights, so I'm not exactly certain I'd want to do that. Okay. Oh my, what do you do with a mouth like this? Give you a moment to think what animal that goes with. I have some very interesting ones, huh? Okay, let's turn the page to see. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net. Oh, oh, this one gives me cold chills. If you're an egg-eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs larger than your head. Ooh. If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. If you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. And if you're an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. Huh, that's interesting, isn't it? All right, and at the beginning of the book, it said that it talked a little bit about the animals at the back of the book. Now, unfortunately, we do not have time to read about all the animals, but I will try to read about one animal from each section. And I would like to know, did you guess any of the animals correctly? As we was going through the book, were you able to guess them? So the first set we're gonna look at was the one that talked about the noses. Okay, we had the platypus, the hyena, the African elephant, 
the American alligator, or the star-nosed mole. Now, while you guys are thinking, you be thinking of the animal you want me to read about. And let me see if I can read somebody's mind out there. Mm, I think I hear somebody saying, let's read about the African elephant. Okay, we will. The world's largest land animal, the African elephant, can stand 13 feet tall and weigh more than 14,000 pounds. Whew. Can you imagine an elephant 14,000 pounds? Whoa. One of the elephant's most unusual features is its long nose or its trunk. With its trunk, an elephant can breathe, pick things up, suck up, spray water, and spray the water, communicate with other elephants, bathe, and defend itself. It does a lot with its trunk, doesn't it? The trunk alone may weigh 400 pounds and be more than six feet long. Wow. It has two thumb-like projections on the end that allow the animal to grasp the leaves, grass, and fruit it likes to eat. The entire human body has more than 600 muscles, but there are as many as 100,000 muscles in an elephant's trunk. Ooh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I learned some things there, very interesting. And if you have a, if your mom or your dad has a tape measure at home, ask them to get it out so you can see how it says it would stand 13 feet tall. So you can see how tall 13 feet is and that its trunk is up to six feet tall, six feet long, not tall, excuse me. So ask your parents to show you on a tape measure the measurements, okay? All right, let's move on. Next, we had the ears. We had the yellow-winged bat, field crickets, the antelope jackrabbit, the hippopotamus, or the humpback whale. All right, let me read. I'm going, you, th you think it, and I'm going to read your mind. I believe I hear somebody talking about, they want to know more about the cricket. Okay, let's read about the field cricket. The field cricket's ears are on its two front legs. Openings in the cricket's hard outer covering lead to chambers inside each leg. By pointing its body and its ears in different directions, the cricket can tell where a sound is coming from. Field crickets, which are about three quarters of an inch long, so they're not very long, and they're that long, and they live throughout North America. They make their familiar chirping sound by rubbing the edges of their wings together. The warmer the temperature, so the hotter it is outside, the faster they chirp. Counting the numbers of chirps in 15 seconds and then adding 40 gives a fairly accurate temperature reading in degrees in Fahrenheit. I thought that was very interesting. If you can count the number of chirps in 15 seconds, add the number 40 to it, and it would tell you about how hot it is outside. That was a very interesting thing, wasn't it? All right, now let's move on to the tails. Okay, we had the skunk, the giraffe, a five-lined skink, the scorpion, and the spider monkey. Okay, I'm putting my thinking cap on. I'm listening out there, and I think I heard someone talk about, they want to know more about the spider monkey. Okay, let's learn about the spider monkey. The spider monkey can use its tail like a fifth hand. The end of its tail has a patch of bare skin with a special groove that helps it grasp things. The spider monkey, along with the other monkeys living in Central and South America, is a New World monkey. New World monkeys are the only primates with a grasping or a prehensile tail. The spider monkey's tail is longer than its body, 
which can be as tall as two feet. The spider monkey often hangs by its tail while eating fruit, leaves, and flowers. Okay, let's move on to the eyes. Okay, let's see. I have an idea what one you guys are going to pick on the eyes. We had the chameleon, the bald eagle, the horned lizard, the four-eyed fish, or the bush baby. This one's not going to take me very long because I have an idea. I believe you're going to want to know more about the horned lizard. I was right, wasn't I? The horned lizard, often called a horny toad, lives in the American Southwest. It is small, three to five inches in length, so you can get a, a ruler and see from three to five inches, and it is covered with sharp spikes. This lizard feeds on ants and other insects, and it protects itself in an unusual way. If threatened, it first tries holding very, very still, like you don't see it, it's not there. If that doesn't work, it puffs itself up with air to make itself look larger. Well, if it still feels threatened, it will squirt streams of blood from the corner of its eyes. This probably confuses an attacker, giving the horned lizard time to get away. That was kind of interesting, wasn't it? Now let's move on to feet. We have the chimpanzees, the blue-footed boobie, a water strider, a gecko, or the mountain goat. And I know that there's a little boy out there. He's in my class right now, and he loves geckos. So let's read about the gecko. If you've spent time in the tropics, you've probably seen small lizards walking on the walls or the ceiling. These noisy insect-eating reptiles are geckos. Their name probably comes from the unusual chirping sound they make. The bottom of the gecko's feet are covered with millions of tiny hairs and pads that use an electro electrical charge to cling to just about any surface, even a sheet of glass. It's almost like magnets is what I kind of think of. Most geckos are about seven inches long. Now, when we was talking about geckos the day at school, we looked up the sound that they make, and they make a very interesting sound. It, it's almost like they're saying their name. So ask someone in your family to look up a gecko, and you can listen to the sound they make. It is a very interesting sound. All right, and the last one we had mouths. We had the brown pelican, the mosquito, the giant anteater. Oh, please don't pick that one. Please don't pick the next one an egg-eating snake, or the archer fish. All right, you be thinking out there, and I think, oh, wait, my mind's a little cloudy. Let me get that to clear up a little bit. Oh, I heard someone say archer fish. Okay, let's read about the archer fish. The archer fish hunts by looking for insects on branches hanging low over the water. It has large eyes set well forward on its head, which give it good depth perception. When it spots a butterfly, beetle, or other insect, the archer fish squirts water out of its mouth and knocks the insects into the water where it can be eaten. This small fish, about 10 inches long, can shoot a stream of water as far as three feet. Archer fish live in quiet waters from the east coast of Africa to Australia. So again, he's 10 inches long, but can spit water three feet away. That's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed that book, boys and girls, as much as I did. And I hope you learned a few things about some different animals out there. Well, that book probably took us a while to read. 
And so I have just a real short activity for us to do. And it is called the Mix and Match Goofy Animal Game. Now I wrote it down here on a piece of paper for your family so they can see where they can go. If you go to artwithcrystal.com, this is a free download. It's a mix and match game, okay? Now, page one, you see we have different animal heads. We have a pig, a cat, an owl, a dog, a frog, and the horse, their heads. Then the second page, we have their bodies, okay? So once your parents download it, print it off for you, you can color the animals, and then you're going to cut on the lines. And if you see these little things that are kind of sticking out there, they're little tabs. Well, what we're gonna do with it, once we have it all colored and cut out, you're going to take it and you're gonna fold them and glue them together to where you have a set of animal dice, okay? You've got one with the heads and one with the bodies, okay? Now, to play the game, you have to take, let's take these things out of our way. You're going to roll the dice and you're gonna see what kind of crazy, mixed up, goofy little animal you can come up with and then you have to give it a crazy name, okay? So first, I'm gonna roll the bodies. Now with these, I printed mine out on cardstock so they were a little thicker, but you have to be very careful when you roll these because you don't want to smash them, okay? So let's see, I get, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, I have a pig body. All right, so there's my pig body. Now let me move it up here. Now let's see what animal head I get. I got a pig body, but a... Uh... Oh, I got a dog head and a pig body. So what you do then is you put them together. Oh, look. All right, so now I need to come up with a goofy name. I've got a dog head and a pig body. Let me see, what can I call it? I'll call it a, a dig. It's a dig animal. Part dog, part pig. <laughs> How funny was that? All right, let's do one more. This time I'll start with the head first. So do 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 do. Give it a roll. Uh oh, I got the pig head this time. And let's see what kind of body I get. And remember, you got to be kind of careful with them. Oh man, I got the pig body. So I have a pig head and a pig body that time. So let's move that around a little bit. Let me find there. Let's have a pig head and a horse body. I made a, let's, what can we call it? Let's call it a, a Porsche. <laughs> How funny was that? Okay, so again, just a real simple game. You can go to artwithcrystal.com and it is a free download, a free print, and you can print it, color, cut, and glue, and then you can have hours of fun mixing and matching and making goofy animals and coming up with goofy animal names. All right, well, I'm glad you stuck with me through that long activity, and I'll see you next week, boys and girls. Bye-bye, have fun, Mwah.